Hey gang! It's Monday! Welcome to Makeover Monday, which is now finding its new home from the store at a different time, but for today I wanted to make sure that those of you who were um, unfamiliar with the changes still were able to find me. So today we're just going to do a quick little um, makeover Monday for those of you who are just joining and just want to get your Monday fix, get your Monday start. Um, makeover Mondays are switching from um, yeah, switching from Makeover Mondays basically um, to Mixed Media Mondays. So the reason I did that was because uh, a lot of you know I have a store and the store is now starting to carry art supplies. And um, not general art supplies. So it's not going to be stuff that you find at Michael's or your, um, your current art supply store or anything like that. This is going to be for like kind of obscure mixed media stuff and encaustic stuff. So in my city, believe it or not, we have very few retailers of encaustic pro pro uh, product. Sorry. So I'm bringing in encaustic product as well as cold wax product and a lot of interesting mixed media things, including uh, vintage mixed media finds, which will be able to sell online and I want to be able to show those. So on Mondays, we're going to be switching from Makeover Mondays to Mixed Media Mondays. Um, and that will happen on, um, on Monday at noon from the store instead. Um, I'm very excited about these things too. So that's why we're switching Monday because it'll be a little more exciting. And then on Thursday, because we have our classes on Friday, I'm going to be not doing um, anything other than from the store. So I'll be doing my store Monday and Thursday, and I'll be studio Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. So um, for today, as I continue to talk about that, for those of you who are just joining, I know a lot of people were confused about my time change thing, and that was just because we had been doing this um, workshop within our private group but now that the restrictions on COVID have kind of lifted a little bit I have to get back to work so um, but that doesn't mean I'm dropping you guys I'm still hanging on to you guys I'll see you on Tuesdays Wednesdays and Fridays at the same place um, but I may have to go over to private or sorry to open for a while so that we can grow our group we've, we've stagnated a little bit and it's not bad it's we've formed a tight little group um, within our open studio but I need to expand that group um, because I am in business with art so anyway so in order to get our group growing I need to switch over to public for a little while but don't worry you'll still find me and uh, so for today let's do our last makeover Monday and it'll be a quick one I'm gonna flip my camera down and then I can show you my options. So when I'm looking at some of my panels, these are ones that I have started and they have lots of great texture and color and everything else, but they really have no composition. So you know how in, in Makeover Mondays, I always start with composition. This panel has none. So basically, just like we've done on Fridays, if you guys have been paying attention to the Friday classes, um, we had the option, oh sorry, I can smell skunk. I wonder if I should close my door. Well, let's hope a skunk doesn't come in. Just one sec, Diane, can you just see what's going on, why we can smell a skunk? Yeah, I just wanna make sure he doesn't wander in. Sorry, everyone. Um, <laughs> that would be a little awkward. Anyways, so in, in Makeover Mondays, I always look at my at my paintings and I'm looking for composition. These have no composition because it shows me that I just started with a lot of background. So this would be like in the letting loose and this would be in the um, like in the category of I can just discard everything and just start over. This one, as you can see, was a little further advanced because I started to develop this one into a painting. So I'm no longer attached to the image that I painted in here, but I do have some composition already started. So maybe this would be a good one 
to start with. And then I have some blank panels. Obviously, that's not a good one. Oh, and this one's encaustic. So let's ignore that one. So for all intents and purposes, let's start with this one here and see what, where we can get with that. I'm going to turn this around. No, I'll do it this way so you guys can see it the proper way. So looking at composition, right, where we always start and, and stop in our paintings, is our eye is always drawn to the area of high and lowest contrast, the greatest area of high and low contrast, which is here, right? We have this um, sort of abstract little table and chair set that I drew and painted in. And then we have immediately to the side of it, we have this darker red color and then we have some of the dark green that takes us down. Over in this corner, we have some dark and some light and then there's a few little lines. I'm not sure if you guys can see them from that vantage point, but there's some scratch lines in here that take us across and then bring us up to this corner. There's sort of a medium tone here and then there's a piece up here. So our eye moves fairly well through this piece. But to be perfectly honest, this was done a long time ago and I'm no longer attached to any of it. So um, that is often the case with, um, you know, when you make a lot of paintings at one time or you make a lot of backgrounds at one time that you kind of outgrow the theme or you outgrow the color scheme or you outgrow something. So I'm going to treat this one as it's got great texture, it's got great colors popping through. But essentially, I'm going to swap out my image and see if I can't change this one like, like that. Um, like I said, it's not doing anything for me. It feels very flat. I'm going to grab a few papers and a few different images and see if I can't get something that looks a little more, a little more me now. So I'm just going through my images, going through my papers. You guys have bundles and bundles of papers now and background images and photographs. Okay, so here, let's just start with this. This is a good place to start. So here I have a napkin. Remember, napkins are generally three plies, so we need to separate this to its last layer. First layer generally comes off fairly easily. Last layer is a bit trickier. Oh, I've got, I'm lucky, I've got my two back layers together. There we go. So I am going to change the atmosphere of this picture. I'm going to put the polka dots in the sky and change it up a bit. I have other bins of images here. So I'll keep those handy and then we'll start with a little bit of our glue. Right? We're going to use our wallpaper paste. I'm going to show you guys a fast makeover today, especially because I'm willing to let go of most of this. All right. Let me grab some brushes collage this on. So this is just a mixed media base. Um, I think I just, I'm not sure why I sealed it. Maybe I thought it was like good to go. Whatever I did, I'm not feeling it anymore. So that is changing. Well, maybe I'll do it on the bottom. Okay. So we'll bring the napkin in. Now, I'm going to push the napkin down with my brush, but if I want it to go more translucent to see what it actually needs to look like, I need to make sure that that soaks all the way through, so I'm going to spray some water on it. And you can see that the um, white of the tissue is disappearing against the background. So already, like, a vast improvement, right? So. Like I said, because I thought I was committed to that image down there. Now I have some more interesting things going on up here that before I didn't really see because it all looked 
Um, like maybe you guys have heard me say this before, but I call it the sea of same. Everything just looked the same. It was a little boring. And now it is time to change that up a bit. So I'm just gonna continue to hold some papers up. And the reason I do that, you've seen me do this before too, is I'm looking for contrast, I'm looking for color, I'm looking for my cue as to what to do next. So my first instinct was to use some text and some old papers, and it's not bad. It's not bad, so I'm gonna keep that as a, as a maybe. Here's some of my back papers. Not terrible either. Not a really big ringing endorsement, if not terrible is my option for the day. Oh, here's a great little piece of collage. So here's another polka dot, but it's got that more vintage paper going on, and I think that one's going to be really good to bring these two sides together a little bit better. So let me just collage that one in. I like it. I'm just going to remove the excess glue. And maybe I'll bring in some paint at this point because it's very white and it's not that I mind the white. I'm just going to soften it a little bit with a bit of uh, a more natural taupe color. So this is called parchment. And it's just going to warm it up a little bit. I also hate this green color, but I'll change that out as well. All right, so for those of you just tuning in, remember that I am um, having to, well, I'm not having to, but because of the restrictions lifting on COVID, I'm having to uh, reopen and restart giving my, my store some attention. But fear not, we are not, uh, I'm not abandoning you guys. We're all still going to be working here just in a different capacity. So um mondays are, and thursdays are now going to be live from the store where i'll be showing you new mixed media product and materials and different techniques and different product that are made as a result of using these materials so if you're not you haven't been you haven't been dropped we're just moving we're moving platforms and i have to do it live and i have to do it public um, sorry, I don't have to do it live, but I have to do it public because if I do it within the group, then I won't be able to grow um, the business. So I'll see you guys live from here on out on Mondays and Thursdays on my public feed. So Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I'll still see you here within our group. I may have to modify how much time we do on Tuesdays and and Wednesdays but that's okay we'll keep our Friday classes going which is I can't believe what you guys are producing I have people who email me who are not able to join our group because of timing and stuff like that but they are absolutely flabbergasted at the work that gets posted so um, we make a good team you guys and I because if I'm getting compliments on your work, then both of us are doing something right. Okay, so see that just warms it up. I don't know if you guys can see that from your end, but from my end it's looking much, much better. I'm going to change the shape of this because you can see I've got this rectangle which frankly is a little boring. So I'm just going to take some scissors. much better so I feel I need an image because remember we've, we've talked about this before so a lot of you work very abstract and I think that is awesome a lot of you work um, with um, you know everybody works very differently and that's that's a, a fantastic gift when you recognize that and you recognize who you are as an artist and you start to evolve that and develop the skill set within your own 
comfy confines. For me, there, much better. For me, what I have realized about myself and my art is that I love a very abstract, very free background with a lot of grunge to it. And then what I appreciate after that is the ability to be able to take that, um, <clears throat> that background or that painting, that abstract painting, and animate it, giving it life and a story by adding an image. So that's what I do. Um, and I have a feeling that that's what a lot of you guys do as well, which is why you're still here. This is why you're here. You're sticking with me week after week because you believe in the same principles that I do when it comes to art making. Um, so the image or the story, the life of the painting for me comes from the, the little character or the animal or the, um, yeah, just the, the thing that animates it, the thing that gives it the life and the story to me is what's really important. Albeit everything is important. This. So those of you who joined us on Friday, I'm going to just cut one of these little babies out because it is just really cool. I apologize if I'm jumping ahead because I we're not using these for a little while. But I'm just going to go ahead and add one of my little papers from our Friday workshop. So this was the Friday workshop hands-on um, paper making. So... If you guys haven't joined, remember there's still lots of time to join. You just go into my website, ChristinaLoviza.com, and you can purchase. Oh, look at how cute that is! And you can purchase the. Um, where are we gonna put this one? You can purchase the workshops for June. The workshops for June are available. Um, indefinitely. So just because you weren't able to participate live. Once you buy the access to the June workshop, you'll get invited into the June group, and that's where all four um, videos will be, so that you'll be able to easily find them each week, and they will be at the top of the post, so it's, it's always easy to find. So... Definitely. So I'm just cutting out some more collage pieces here. No paint yet, um, other than that little bit of warmth at the top. It's still looking pretty coordinated. There. So I'm changing the overall tone, right? It's getting a lot more light now. Still haven't decided on an image. Oh, look at that napkin. I wonder how that bird would look. Let's try it. So, I've also seen some of you are proposing and doing a napkin swap, and I am thrilled to hear that. I am thrilled to hear that. I'm going to put this little bit here, a few stars, spray it with some water, makes the tissue disappear a little bit better. On the white background, it disappears very nicely. No, I don't think that that bird's going to cut it. You see, it's just, it's too, it's too blah. What else could I do up there? So I'm just looking through my papers. Remember, there is no harm in just holding things up, trying. If you're working vertically, you can always spray a little bit of... Mm, nope. You can always spray a little bit of water on your piece and hold it up and see if it works. Here's some more stars. I'm gonna put these over here. Awesome. This background is like transforming, right? It's taking on a whole new life and all I've done is collage a few little bits over top of what I already had. The influence of the texture, the color, the imagery, everything is still in the background. I'm still loving it. See if I can scratch a little bit through here. 
nice. Okay. Image. Image, image, image. So when I'm looking for images, I'm looking for something that completes the story. So that's why when I tried, I mean, I could plunk anything down and it would all work. But I'm looking for something that's going to complete this story. So what am I actually saying here? What am I doing in this painting? That's the one thing I have to, I have to decide and I have to commit to. Oh, this is fun. So this, hmm, that's neat. So this is actually an antique subway roll. So I have it in my house and it hangs above my couch and it's actually, um, it was actually not a subway, sorry, a streetcar. So it was actually on a streetcar and it's this long roll that was on the front of the streetcar that would show people where the next location was, right? Or the next destination, just like we have now. But instead of a digital screen, they actually just had this roll. So I bought one of these at an antique store a long time ago and I just adore everything about it. It's got such a great, um, it's got such great old graphics and it's really, anyway, hanging in my house as an art piece, I love it. And then the excess that we couldn't use, I end up um, incorporating into my paintings. And I think it's really, really, really a lovely piece to have. So I want to add some paint, I think, because it's feeling to me, like you see this little pink here and now this little shot here. This feels a little commercial to me because I didn't make those dots, so that's a napkin. So I'm gonna bring in a bit of color. And so I'm just gonna run over to my paints here, grab something, and see what I can come up with. All right, so let's try a bit of a, this is called First Kiss. It's a chalk paint by Van Gogh. Um, I like working with chalk paints and clay-based paints a lot because of their opacity. So it will look nice and um, opaque against this, this um, background that I have, which is all very translucent at this point, right? We see through the tissue, we see through to the paint before, we see through to the texture. So this should add a little bit of opacity that I was kind of missing in the whole thing. So, let me grab a brush and try and paint some of this out. So I'm using an existing line. I'm always telling you guys how I use my, my scratches and my lines as my roadmap of what to do next. So I'm just following some of these lines in order to give myself a bit of... Um, yeah, a bit of direction, I guess, as to where I'm putting these, this paint, this color. So I'll pick out this shape, and if it looks good, it stays. If I need to expand on it, if I need to make it a bigger shape, then I have the ability to do that. My napkin is still very soggy and wet. It's tearing a lot, but that's okay. You never know till you try, right? So let's put in a bit of yellow. The yellow with the pink always looks really nice. Maybe I'll put in a bit more yellow because I'm letting this dry. I have the ability of leaving it on as thick as I want, create some texture through it. go. I'm going to get a baby wipe and thin it out on this side, I think. It's a nice um, combination, this pink and this yellow together. There, a little hit of it in that corner looks great. 
Let me see if you guys have any questions. Let me flip this up for a sec. Oh, no questions so far. Just a bunch of highs. Hi, guys. So I'll take this opportunity to tell you guys again, for those of you just joining me today on Makeover Monday, I'm switching Makeover Mondays. I'm having to switch over Makeover Mondays to Mixed Media Mondays, and they'll take place from the store instead. Um, and the reason for that is just because now with the COVID restrictions uh, lifting, I have a responsibility of a store. So um, coincidentally, I'm also now selling unique and interesting mixed media and encaustic supplies. So um, I will make sure that you guys get to see those things firsthand by doing my videos live from there. So on Mondays and Thursdays, I'm gonna be live from the studio, but I'm also not gonna be within our group. I have to make it public, so you'll have to watch me on um, on those feeds. So there we go. It's also, I'm on Instagram as well, but I'll be posting from a curated nest on my, um, on Instagram. There, so I'm gonna grab some baby wipes and soften that a little bit. Too much yellow, but you can see that I'm using it as a stain in a lot of parts. And that stain is going to help move your eye through this painting a little better. I felt it was a little flat before, so I'm not sure what phase I was in before when I first made this, but it felt really flat. And now I'm really happy to be able to wake it up with a bit of, um, with a shot of color. I still like my neutrals, but I do like the neutrals punctuated by some great color. So you can see that looks much better already. And that pink with the yellow is just like, it's alive. Just alive. bit too much in some places so I'll just soften it baby wipes are fantastic for softening and blending but because I have that napkin underneath it's also very very soggy right now so the most important thing I can do for this painting is give it a bit of dry time And maybe because I don't know what image I'm going to do on this, maybe I'm not committing to an image just yet. Maybe the story of this painting needs to reveal itself just a little bit more before I commit to that story. See how those polka dots are poking through? That, to me, is the good stuff. Yeah, I'm liking that a lot more now. So it is definitely more awake, this whole painting. I'm gonna add a bit of my favorite color. My favorite accent pop color. I'm just gonna draw right out of the bottle. So this is um, Fluorescent Red by Liquitex. go. Once it's dry, I can decide if I want more or less. Let me paint some of it over. It's definitely given direction to this painting. Oh well, yeah, I decided I was going to use some of the subray roll, didn't I? Is S the right word? Maybe, but I think it's going to go over here now, which is interesting because I hadn't planned on that. So because this is heavy, I'm not going to use wallpaper paste. I'm going to use a heavier duty glue. So off to the medium I go. So for those of you who have gel medium, um, that is, it's better than liquid mediums for sure. When you're gluing heavy body items, you want a heavy body glue. So this is a gel medium comes in a jar and because the base is really soggy I'm not actually going to put glue on it right now 
because I'll just spread everything around, but instead I'll put a really heavy amount of glue, or gel medium rather, on my collage bit, and I'm gonna push it down thoroughly and squish out any glue. The excess glue that I squish out, I'm gonna to have to remove because I will see it, it will dry as a clump. There we go. So I'm just gonna use my baby wipe again and pick up any excess glue that came out. Wipe off anything on the surface. Nice. So I still think I have room for an image on here, but um, for now, let's let this thing dry till tomorrow. And maybe in Tech Tuesday, maybe we'll do a, a transfer or something on here. I'm not 100% sure, but remember what I always say, when you're leaving a mixed media painting, this is the time to take advantage of um, your dry time. So when you're gonna, ab not abandon something, but when you're gonna leave it overnight to dry, this is a perfect opportunity to um, to add some more paint, to make your drips, to do whatever it is you want to do to it, so that it has an opportunity to dry and to um, be nice and sort of ready for the next steps as you um, have the time to let it do what it does best, right, when it's drying. So I just found another piece of collage here which coincidentally has the same shape. So I'm just gonna add this window. And it's really not terrible, but I think I, I do need to put in a bit of neutral. So I get um, another neutral and I'm gonna soften a little bit more here and there. I do have a bit more yellow than I think I want. So maybe a good bridge between the parchment and the yellow might be this camel color. Don't love it straight out of the bottle so maybe I'll mix it with a bit of the parchment. Straight out of the bottle it has a bit of a pink tone. I hate when taupes have a pink tone to them. So, I'm just going to mix that, add a little bit of that parchment color, which I found was a bit pale at the beginning. Maybe even having used a dirty brush that had the yellow on it, it'll warm it up a little bit. Nice. That's a much better color. There. And then I think I'll do some white on top of that tomorrow, like just a, a crisp white for a pop. But it's helping tone down that yellow, as you can see. And it's not that the yellow is its a bad color, it's just in the amount that I put it in, it's acting, um, I think, a bit better as like a, to warm up the painting, but it's not a great color in complement to the other colors I have going on. Nice. Warm that up. You see how the white's still popping through there? And that white popping through there is really bringing your eye over to this piece. So the highest area, or the greatest area of high and low concentration, you can see is definitely here. But these lines and little bits of black and things are moving you through the painting, especially this little pop up here of the cross that I added. I'm liking that a lot. So I think um, overall we have a pretty good composition right now. Um, in the spirit of leaving things wet, I'm going to pull out one of my favorite metallics which is the blue gold because I think I can leave it wet enough that it might serve as a nice little pop compared to all these other colors and it's already existing in this piece of collage that I added so it's got a nice a nice um, sense of purpose in this painting. There. 
lovely. Now I think I'm going to do, I have this little tiny piece of collage. It just feels right to stick it down just in the wet paint. If it sticks, it's meant to be there. If it doesn't, I suppose it was not. Pick up some of the paint that I spilled. Move it across. Okay, so I think that is wet enough for today. Um, Maybe I'll tone it down tomorrow. Fresh eyes always gives us a new perspective on our artwork, right? So for today, it feels much better. It feels much more alive than it did before. Um, loving the pops of color against the neutrals. Think I'm gonna maybe um, tame the whole thing a little bit tomorrow with some white. But for now, it's very wet, very soggy. Will it get an image? Perhaps. Uh, that remains to be seen. So let's do that tomorrow on Technique Tuesday. And um, thanks for watching, everybody. I am going to sign off. Where are you? There you are. So I'll sign off for today. But just quick reminder, Mondays and Thursdays from now on are going to be from the store. And um, they won't be as long. So they'll be more condensed. They'll be more about um, product that's available in the store, but also finished product that is done with that product. So, um, for example, if I show you a painting um, or a piece of artwork that's done there, I'll show you how it was done or I'll tell you and I'll explain to you how it was done. And if I have the products available, then they'll also be available through the store. But that way on Mixed Media Mondays now, you'll have a different um, approach to Mixed Media by seeing finished product as well as how to use okay so it'll be a little bit different a little bit different delivery on mondays and thursdays thursday the time has to change but we'll talk about that later um but for now i'll see you tomorrow same place same time tomorrow noon and uh eastern and within our group for technique tuesday so technique tuesday i'm going to um, talk about maybe oh that's a good idea we'll talk about image selection so I'll take this painting that we did today on on uh, which is now mixed media Monday right or makeover Monday um, formerly makeover Monday and we will talk about how to choose imagery and then how to seat your imagery within your painting meaning how to choose the size how to choose the scale how to choose the color that kind of thing so instead of incorporating it which we've done on other weeks this one's going to be how to actually choose the image to go in there so i'm looking at dozens and dozens of images in front of me and none of them are speaking to me to animate that painting so i might have to go digging for something new or i may have to print something new but I'll know it when I see it, and it's just not in front of me right now. So that is an excellent place to start tomorrow. See you guys. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.